All right, I think we're going to have heaps of fun in this video, and you'll see what I mean by that in a minute. But first of all, I recommend, uh, even if you want to learn about heaps that you watched the previous video, to give you some context, and there will be a link to that right here. Um, and with that out of the way, let's take a look at this code that I have here. Uh, it loops through all of the unvisited nodes in our graph to find the lowest cost node by weight. And when we looked at this, we, we, we were thinking, hmm, we don't really want to have to loop through every single node if we can avoid that. So we're going to ask ourselves this very important question, question that every computer programmer should ask his or herself. Can we do better? As an algorithm designer, and if you're a programmer, you are an algorithm designer, this is a very important question for you. Can you do better? Can you make your algorithm faster? We don't want to have to visit every single node in this graph to find the lowest cost node if we can help it. And so we're going to try and devise a strategy for uh, sorting our data so that we always have the lowest cost node in an easy to reach place. And then the trick is making sure that the second lowest cost node is also easily accessible next time we go to look at it. And this is possible with a data structure called a heap. A heap. So let's show you a little bit of uh, how a heap looks here. The basic property of a heap is that the lowest element is always at the top of the heap. That's why it's called a heap, because the light stuff goes to the top and the heavy stuff goes to the bottom. It does look sort of like a tree here. If I fill in some numbers, I might put 1 here and 8 right there, maybe a 10 here. Let's put 102 right here, 12. This is just an example heap. As long as each number is heavier than the numbers above it and lighter than the ones below it, it's fine. Notice that 10 is smaller than 12. The value of 10 is smaller than 12, but 10 is lower in the heap. That's okay though, because 10 is not attached to 12. All we care about is that the direct uh, descendants of 8 are larger than 8, and 10 and 102 are larger than 8, and 8 is less than 1. So this is a valid heap. And you can see the smallest item is right here. We don't have to search through every item in an array to find which is the smallest one, because the smallest one is right there at the top of the heap. So what happens if we want to pop that smallest item off of the heap? Let me make sure everybody knows here. That's the smallest. No matter what we do with this heap, the smallest item will always be on top. So we want to pop this top item off of the heap. We want to use it for something else. We want to consume it. But we still want to heap, leave the heap in a consistent state so that the next time we pop something off of it, uh, it will still be a valid heap and it will still have the smallest item on top. So there's an algorithm that we use to do that. And it's very simple. We just take the next smallest item, that's a direct child, and we uh, move it on up. It gets a promotion. In this case, the smaller of 8 and 12 is, of course, 8. And so we're going to put 8 here on top of the heap. And that leaves this space open, where the 8 was. And so what are we going to put there? We take the smaller of its two children, 102 and 10. 10 is, of course, the smaller of 102 and 10. And now we can just get rid of 10 entirely. And this is our new heap. Pretty easy. And so whereas before, 
we had an algorithm that was linear. In other words, if there are n items in our array, we had to search all n items in order to find the lowest value. That was our linear search through a through an array. Now we have a logarithmic search. And in fact, this is log base 2. Why is it logarithmic? You'll notice that this is a tree. And every time we descended down a node in the tree, we started at the 1 that was here, and we descended to the 8, we completely skipped half of our tree. Half of our tree. And then we went from the 8 to the 10, and we skipped another half of our tree. You can imagine that there may have been a whole bunch of other stuff down below this 102 if our heap had been larger. Anyway, anyway we skipped all of it. And so each time we skip down the tree, this was a 10 before, each time we skip down the tree, we skip half of the things that are in the tree. So that means if we have n hops down our tree, we divide the amount of data we're dealing with by 2. How many divisions by 2 do we have to do in order to go down the tree, all the way down the tree? Well, the answer, of course, is log base 2 of n. And this big O notation, I'm pretty sure I covered it in, the, in a previous video, so I'll put a link here. It just means uh, what is the most amount of work that we have to do if there are n items in our data structure. That's the meaning of the big O notation. So now that we have that out of the way, how do we get all this into a computer? Well, the answer is we're going to put it in an array. Let's build an array here. And let's try to get exactly seven items in it because we have seven items left in our tree. Very good. And we're going to follow a simple rule. If we have a child, a node, at position n in our tree, then its children, its children, will be at positions 2n plus 1 and 2n plus 2. Okay, 2n plus 1 and 2n plus 2. And this looks like a really convoluted system, but it actually works out really well. It's kind of neat. Let's go over it. Uh, if I have the 8 at the top of the tree, that will go here at position 0. There's an 8 in position 0. And it has children 10 and 12. So if position 0 is our n, then we do these little formulas. 2 times 0 plus 1 is 1. And 2 times 0 plus 2 is 2. So the children will go in positions 1 and 2. And it's also important to put the larger child first. 12 is larger than 10. So we're going to put 12 and then 10. And we've begun our heap. We can see that 8 is smaller than both 12 and 10. So this is still a consistent heap. So let's look at 12. It has children 40 and 45. 12 is in position 1. So we're going to say 2 times 1 plus 1, that is 3. Position 3 is where the number 40 goes. And actually, we should put the larger of the two right here, so we're going to put 45 right here. And 40 will go in position 4, which is 2 times 1 plus 2. That's where 40 goes, in position 4. And then... Uh, Let's see. Number 10. Number 10 is in position 2. And so it has a child. It has a single, single child. Uh, 102. What are, where does 102 go? Well, t 10 is in position 2. We're going to 2 times 2 plus 1 is 4 plus 1 is 5. So 10 will go in position 5. This will be 102 right there. And I appear to have drawn too many blocks in my heap. We don't need this one. So we can implement a heap in an array, which is a very efficient way of implementing a heap. Let's go back to our Dijkstra's algorithm that we covered in the previous video. 
and make it faster. Now, I'll bet you were looking forward to writing the code to implement a heap popping algorithm. And that's great. I'm very happy for you. But I'm not going to write that code because there's a standard library function that does that for us. It's called pop heap. Why should I do it when the standard library function does it? Although, if you want to have some fun and learn something, I highly suggest you try implementing a heap. I think it's a blast. And uh, it'll really help you understand how heaps work. But for now, we will look at the pop heap function that comes with the C++ standard template library. First, you give it the array that is storing your heap. That's what I've done here. And you give it a function that says how to consider uh, each thing in the heap larger or smaller than another thing in the heap. Let's look at that function really quick. I put it way up here. So it will pass us the indexes of the node that we're storing in our in our graph, and I'm sorry, in our array, and we're just going to grab those nodes from the graph and look at each path weight and compare them. And compare them. Uh, I think this comparison is backwards. This should be a less than, but the library wants it to be a greater than in order for us to sort our heat with the smaller weight at the top of the library. So that's what we give it. And what this function does is it actually will move the smallest item on the top of the, heap, of the heap to the very end of the array. So it doesn't remove it entirely, it just moves it to the back where we can access it. Here it is on the back. And so we can pull that out and then pop whatever's on the back of the array and then we have our lowest node very cheaply. And if we run the game, we can see that our algorithm still works great, gives us a nice blue path. And it will be much faster now that it doesn't have to consider every single node in the graph in order to find out which is the lowest weight node that it cons should consider next. Great. So next we're going to look at an algorithm that ignores nodes that are very far away from the target or are very out of the way of the target. And we're going to do that in the next video. I'll see you then.